Okay, people. <laughs> so it is now April 23rd, 2020. And it's like, oh, I don't know, 12 30 in the morning or something like that. It's just starting. You can see what I'm doing here. Do you see this? This thing was on my porch, honest to God, for like two, three years. It was rained on, right? It was on my porch, it was kicking around, and then it ended up in the X Club, right? And I hung out in there for a year. Anyway, I never did throw it out. I, I, I either got it from next door when the Koreans were living there, or Sierra dragged it home. Or maybe I dragged it home. I don't know. All I know is it was, like, on my porch for, like, three years. So, I actually took it apart and gave it a good clean. And it's dried out. I plugged it in. It actually works. So, I don't know what kind of metal this is, though. Right? I was sanding it. At one point, you can see. All right, but down here, I've decided to try and use Vim and a little a scrub brush. All right, I scrub it harder than this, but I'm just getting this on now. Right, I'm gonna give it a good scrub. Good scrub. All right, good scrub. It seems to be working. So that's what I'm doing, people. I was in here earlier working on Auntie Shimei stuff. I was going through her medical files from when she was on the in 2018 when she died. I was organizing them. I'm trying to anyway. So I got them in binders now two separate binders and uh, some of the writing I can't read right and some of this stuff that's written I don't quite understand but I got that part done I'm trying to move along in here right so you see I'm doing like this just to get it going. Because you can see how nice it is. Right? I have this, um, oh, where is it? Oh, I didn't bring it in here. It's to clean metal, right? But I thought I'd try this first. I couldn't justify throwing it away. One, because it's kind of like a little bit of an antique, right? And it was well made for what it was worth in terms of just found it. Uh, something nobody else wanted. And I was going to do this a long time ago. I just never had time. <clears throat> but I don't want it to get broken, so... I brought it in, I dried it off, and then I took it apart, got out all the spiders, just whatever, all right, and then uh, put it back together, and then I brought it in here, then it sat down there for, oh, I don't know, half a year, four months, four months maybe. I'm trying to clear out the sewing room, right? So maybe I can make myself a pair of pants. And I need to make diapers for Amari. I want to make diapers for Amari. For the day, right? Daytime. Probably be more comfortable for him. A few other things I want to do in here. All right. I miss the good old days in my sewing room. It's gonna look nice when this is done. 
Alright, that's why I kept it. Tisha says, well, why do you keep these things? And I'm like, well, it's because I'm not like you. <laughs> right? I do things differently. But, you never even finished your angel yet. As if I don't know, right? It's still there, though, if you notice. Alright, I've been thinking about it. I've just been too busy with this stuff, people. Right? I'm taking some out. I'm trying to organize where I'm going to put it. Debating whether I should get Sierras. Sierras will be boxes full. Like, seriously. <laughs> As if I have any place for it. Alright. So now, I'm just going to let that sit for a bit. And then I'm going to take the stiffer brush to it. And I'm going to really use some elbow grease on it. And maybe I'll do up here too. I don't know what kind of metal this is. I really don't. I don't think it's silver. I mean, it kind of looks like silver though. I'm not very good with my metals. Right, it tarnishes. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to use for that yet. <clears throat> I'm debating whether I should hang something from it. Right. I don't even have any place to put this thing. But I like it. I like stuff like this. And go all the way around. I might put it over there somewhere. Okay. So for what it's worth, it looks pretty nice, people. Like, serious. And this metal is so nice. <clears throat> so nice. I don't know what I'm going to do up here. I have an idea, but this is so nice. Yeah. Okay, people, I'm in Uncle John's chair. Remember, this is Uncle John's chair. Okay? Back from the good old days. I'm like so tired, I don't know. I've been doing paperwork a little bit. I got I got the notice of claim back. I'll, I'll, I'll do a different video on that one. What I'm doing right now is I'm putting on my old work boots here. <laughs> Getting mud everywhere. I'm gonna go out in the yard and I'm going to get into the uh, X Club and I'm going to start pulling out some of these trees so I can make room to start some seedlings. I'm not really motivated right now. Once I get outside and I move around, it's a little better, but I'm kind of starting late right now because I was listening to a, a video being done by uh, a little news outlet up in the South Carolina area. And uh, I actually enjoyed um, the footage. It was done quite well. And it had various speakers within, you know, the legislative bodies of uh, that state talking about what's going on with this coronavirus crap, you know. And all I see is just a bunch of power mongers playing out of the same playbook to uh, elevate themselves into a futuristic transhuman 
fucking platform where it will be 10% against the 90% where the 90% will basically have absolutely no human rights left if we stay on this path of uh, a new form of eugenics based on criminalizing somebody that may or may not have an antibody to a so-called virus that uh, can be easily manipulated through falsifying medical records in terms of how people are actually dying and because we can't fact check these deaths by having independent autopsies done you know not to mention even witnessing their deaths in some instances or being a part of the burial process right I mean look what I had to go through just to identify Sierra's body like 19 days later you know they didn't let me see Sierra's body on March 28th because apparently she didn't look pretty it was ugly okay well you think about it 19 days later looking at her body in a body bag after it had been autopsied and been in cold storage for 19 days like I don't know what's more uglier people right like we're, we're living in a backward society where you know the wrong kind of people are dictating to us how we're going to live the rest of our lives as they uh, condition children at a very very early age to be completely complicit right to the uh, social abuse that they will be subject to for the rest of their lives if we don't get off this fucking bandwagon that's my opinion so in the meantime uh, you know I was looking at some videos in regards to the inner cities in the various states within the United States <coughs> <laughs> where there's a high density of population that, you know, struggle with poverty, right? And, you know, I looked at videos from 2019 before the virus came. And I'm looking at similar videos via through this YouTuber that drives around in neighborhoods and just basically documents, you know, neighborhoods that are like basically poor you know are in squalor you know they're they're facing degradation generational after generation right you know until such time gentrification comes in and displaces the indigenous population into no man's land right so anyway based on what I was watching I, you know like sitting up here in Canada like, I don't know where people live when they watch my videos, but, you know, in, in light of the signs of the times, you know, I, I look at my life, even though I'm feeling miserable, feeling sorry for myself, you know, feeling unmotivated, feeling defeated, whatever it is that I'm feeling in a negative sense, you know, I, 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 I look at these other videos and I see how people are being, you know, how they're forced to live, first of all, right? And then to have these added burdens and added restrictions put on to families that are already living on the edge with no available resources within their surrounding areas in terms of like row housing after row housing after row housing that's dilapidated because you know um, our ruling class let us live in squalor because if we live in squalor people then we fight and if we fight we, we, we just, you know, we become victims to that cycle. Sierra was targeted to that cycle. Shimei was targeted to that cycle. Uncle John was targeted to that cycle. And so on and so on. Right? <clears throat> so, anyway. Okay, I don't want to get into that. So, but what I do want to say is, though, you know... I suppose for somebody that maybe, this is for the people watching my videos, okay? <clears throat> I don't know where you live, I don't know where you come from, I don't know what your circumstances are, I don't know what you have access to. I mean, obviously it's going to be a mosh-posh 
of individuals that have access to different resources, whether it's you know, directly related to their income and they're you know living in a in an environment where they feel confident that they can survive, right? They can feed their families. You know, they've done food prep for the last 25 years. You know, their house is mainly paid off. You know, I don't know if I have viewers like that, or if I have viewers that are actually you know, living in the Bronx, right, in, in, a, in a, you know, an apartment size, um, I don't want to say cubicle, but, you know, an apartment size, right, upon apartment, upon apartment, upon apartment, upon apartment, upon apartment, with limited um, access to uh, grocery stores, because by design, that's what the politicians did. You know, they brought in the liquor stores, they brought in the fast food chains, but they removed the um, grocery stores, per se, where people can go out and buy, you know, reasonable food at a reasonable cost without having to rely on food banks to do it. So as I'm watching this video, you know, I see, you know, I, I, I see the degradation that's in the here and now, right? And I don't see, like, for example, to keep it simple, you know, there's a lot of garbage being spewed around in these neighborhoods. And, you know, it's like anywhere you go, though, people just keep on walking by <coughs> because they don't want to, you know, they're not getting paid to pick it up, so why should they pick it up? It's not their garbage, right? <coughs> but, <coughs> you know, after a while, though, the garbage starts to pile up and it scatters around. You know, and before you know it, it becomes a real problem. And, you know, even though people may be ignoring it on the surface, inside of themselves, it's doing psychological damage. So, I had, when I was watching this video yesterday, several of them, right? And I'm noticing this trend where, you know, there's a lot of garbage just being left around for whatever reason. I, I had two thoughts, okay? Two thoughts. Okay, obviously the people are being themselves you know, negligent to not try and beautify their neighborhood, I guess you could say. But then my next question was, where is the city with, you know, refuge pickup? Like, you, right? It's almost like the city themselves are not picking up the fucking garbage, and therefore the people themselves have now given up, right? So I think I got a big ass cement truck now going up and down my alley because of this new and approved old folks home over here. Right? I mean, they're building an old folks home, right? I don't know how many, 155 suites to stuff a bunch of old people in there, 55 and up, right? Somehow that, that's okay, but, right, you can congregate in the halls, you can, you know, what, one person goes up the elevator at a time? Like, oh my God, society is so backwards right now, people. I mean, based on their fucking, you can't congregate. Well, why, why are they building these things? To stuff everybody in. What's the difference between this being built compared to an old folks home? Right? You got all these old people in both freaking locations. Anyway. Hopefully the coronavirus will be gone by that time, right? By the time this thing is done, it will all be gone. The mystery will be gone. <coughs> so, okay. So... I'm like, okay, well, what, what can you, you know, do to inspire people? No matter, you know, what the hell's going on, right? You know, you, you know because you got it pretty fucking good, right? I'm like, don't, think, just stop feeling sorry for yourself. Just I tell myself when I'm like, you know, feeling defeated, people. Feeling like I'm living on the edge, waiting for that axe to come. Right? You know, it's been gone going, going and going and ongoing and going and going and ongoing for so fucking long that, you know, you just end up wait, you know, you live to die, right? You just, you wait for it because our society is so out of control. But at the same time, there's little things that we can do. For me, for somebody that, you know, is watching my video in a situation where you know, the garbage is piling up and they feel helpless to do anything about it because it would be unrealistic to go out there and try and clean it for yourself, you know, and even if you did, chances are people would walk on by you and they would mock you before they'd fucking help you. They would be like, oh, look, there's the garbage picker cleaning up the garbage, 
right? Why is that person doing that? They're not getting paid. Why should they? So it's something wrong with them, right? And they'll just keep on fucking walking to the point where you'll do it, you'll do it, you'll do it, and eventually you're just going to burn out, right? You're going to burn out because nobody's helping you. They're criticizing you while you do it. You know, they're not rewarding you even to say a thank you. Just, right? Degregation breeds degregation, right? The more garbage that piles up, the more garbage that's going to pile up. So at some point, though, you know, people are going to have to reverse that is what I'm trying to say, right? You got to reverse that. So, you know, I don't know if you live in a neighborhood that's like doesn't have that problem because you're a middle class person that has, you know, food security and <clears throat> financial safety nets, right? Maybe you have a job, so you don't have to worry about that. But you could mentor. That's, you know, that's something that you can do. You can mentor outside of the box, right? <coughs> Without pointing a finger and criminalizing people. For, you know, it's bad enough that we're criminalizing people for being poor. It's bad enough that we're criminalizing people for being addicted to something. It's bad enough that we're criminalizing people for being, you know, mentally ill or just physically sick, you know, just the whole nine yards. Now we've taken it one step further and we're going to start criminalizing people based on the lack of or, the, you know, having an antibody. Right? That's the big hunt now, people. It's like a form of fucking eugenics. They want to get in touch with your DNA so that they can put it into a main database and then track you and your children for the rest of your life as they dictate to you that it is no longer your body and yet you have no rights because the greater um, minority within a ruling class has basically cornered you into that position through um, one fear mongering and power mongering, right? But that you know that doesn't change the here and now. So if you're living in a more impoverished area, for example, <coughs> and you're feeling helpless <coughs> to clean up the garbage, because that's the easiest place to start in terms of you know, improving the general, overall public morale, right? In light of all the setbacks that communities are facing, then I would kind of like encourage you to try and put together a little project where you can invite people to participate in that morale building right without having to wait for permission to do it in terms of it's your community you have a right to clean it up right so if the garbage is bagged and the city's not picking it up then we need to ask ourselves why why is the city not picking up the garbage if the garbage is picked up and already bagged right because if the city refuses to pick up the garbage and gives a bunch of reasons not to do it, especially in a time like this, right, then then that just brings to light more of that ulterior agenda that's being placed upon the uh, general population through that mass hypnosis. And when the mass hypnosis doesn't work, that's when they bring in the big guns with the rules and the fines and the threats of jail, you know, the gang stalking, the intimidation, the uh, retaliation, just, right? <coughs> this is just food for thought. So in the meantime, for the ones that don't have a yard and wish they had a yard, well, I wish that for you too, right? I, I really do, you know, um, so in that case, you know, looking again at those videos, you know, this person driving down the road, I see, okay, well, we can do this, you know, we can get into, like, just picking up general crap off the ground, you know, getting the city involved to be picking it up in a timely manner so that it boosts overall morale. And then, if you notice, there's a piece of property over there that's vacant, has nothing on it, you know, somebody needs to approach the owner and ask them if they can start a community garden and plant a couple trees maybe and, and, and bring in, you know, um, a secondary food source that's not only nutritional 
but mentally healing. Right? Doesn't hurt to ask. Doesn't hurt to write a few letters. It doesn't hurt to sit there and just do a little mini projection in terms of a project. Right? You, you, you have to keep yourself busy. And, you know, I can only imagine what it would be like living in the inner cities at this point in life with all this dictatorship around me that does not have my better interest at heart, okay? Um, you know, people aren't stupid, right? And, you know, if I was in that situation, I would be looking around my neighborhood and trying to encourage people to come together in such a way that can boost up the overall morale of the community with uh, um, the results of something being produced. And not everything costs money, people. Okay? Right? And just because you put in some work into something, the reward isn't always, in, in essence, comes from a, like a coin, right? Or a dollar bill. The, the reward can come in in a different way. Right? So if I, for example, wouldn't have invested 10 years into this yard like I have for no money, okay? I never got paid for it, people. I wouldn't be in a position where I can actually grow food, right, and and build in food security, and um, assuming I don't get kicked out because somebody else wants to grow that food now, now that there's a place for it to grow, <laughs> right? So, but that's the chance you have to take in life, right? So I, that's that's all I want to say, okay. Because I sometimes I kind of feel guilty, right? That I have a yard and there's other people that don't, right? So, I am going to go. I wasn't sure if it's hot or cold. My immune system is down. Let's go in here, people. See, I'm walking slow. I've been working on paperwork. I was standing on my feet all day yesterday in the sewing room working on sorting out Shemay's medical files. Right. Hold on, maybe I'll turn this off and then when I get this opened, I'll, uh... Okay, so as you can see, my babies are coming up. Right. Yep. See? That one. Hmm? So anyway, I'm going to take out some of them. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And start some seeds in here, I guess. Uh, so I'm kind of worn out, but anyway, hold on. Okay, people. So, here we go. Same day, I'm going to upload this right after I'm done this. I'm moving like a snail outside, just... Right. Anyway, here we are. This is British Columbia, Canada. They're having their update, right? Talking about this pandemic. I made a post, people. You know. And I figured they'd get shady with me anyway. If you notice, it says one comment. So I'm pretty sure if I exit out of here, uh, you see, I just refreshed the page. It hasn't changed. That tells me that my comment, more than likely, has been shadow banned. No, they blocked it, right? More than likely. Now, maybe they have review comments. A lot of people do, right? So maybe, maybe they'll prove it. Maybe they won't. But this was my comment. Okay, in regards to this woman going on and on about this pandemic from her playbook, people. Five million people, that's how many there is. Five million point, no, five million, oh, what was it? Uh, seven hundred and, five million, five million people, seven, seventy-five, seventy-one thousand people, okay? So we're, we're pushing up to five million 100,000 people. So in the meantime, she said we have 94 dead. 
She doesn't tell us who died, where they came from, what their underlining health conditions were. She's just saying 94 people died from the coronavirus, which is very misleading people. My comment, 5 million people with 94 dead is not a pandemic. That is a statement. Okay. There is nothing to prove anyone died from the coronavirus while the underground economy of illegal activity is booming in BC. Nothing has changed, people, with the underground economy. Because that's something that the government doesn't like to fucking deal with. Okay. That's why we have such a huge problem with the underground illegal activities within the province of British Columbia, Canada that launder money through multiple areas. That hasn't stopped. Okay, the rich keep getting richer while the poor keep getting poorer. And then I said, nobody in this province can get a second independent forensic autopsy to verify reason of death. That's already been determined with Sierra. And if organs were harvested illegally. And that's based on what happened to Shimei and Sierra. And then I just simply said, that says something. So if you can't fact check the numbers, right, even as an individual family wanting to double check that grandma's IV in terms of water wasn't turned off at the pump, and then her records were falsified to say she died from the coronavirus to cover up the act of murder, right? Which is going on in this province, people, for nefarious reasons, whether it's to seize assets of the elderly as they die off, again, whether it's through the public guardian and trustee, or, you know, family members that are rogue and just can't wait to get their fingers on that money. Right? Because the majority of these old people in these old folks' homes have assets. So just remember that. Because if they didn't have assets, they'd be out on the streets, basically. And we do have an elderly population growing in this province, British Columbia, Canada, that are elderly with no homes, sleeping in cars or in shelters. So first of all, I just want to point out that she's not telling us who's dying, right? She's just saying they're dying. She's broad sweeping it by saying it's a pandemic based on what other people are saying. But again, this is all being done out of one playbook that had already been practiced it's called 2001, some little scenario thing that politicians were practicing in case of a pandemic before two months, three months later, this stuff rolled out. Okay, they're parroting, par par right? Our politicians are parroting, parroting, like a parrot, you know, Polly says, give me a cracker. They're parroting the same narrative right across the continent, right? You can say the world to bring in the new world order, right? So that you lose your basic human rights as you're being humiliated and ostracized and criminalized as they do it, all right? Now, they can remove my comment because they don't want to accept the fact that their legislation is flawed, right? And that, you know, people do have a right to fact check things, right? Unless, of course, we really go into a totalitarian, uh, communist, Chinese, you know, regime. If you don't fucking bow down to the rules that these people are dictating to us 
for uh, an ulterior political agenda, people. Right? You know? So anyway, I just I just wanted to point that out. Now, at some point, I'm going to... Uh, what is it called? Come back and check that video to see if maybe my comment got approved at a later date. Because, you know, they could be reviewing comments. Now, I, I didn't say anything bad, people. It was straight to the point. I'm, in a, I'm entitled to my opinion. Right? I've been wanting to save more, but I've been holding back. Right? Because I know that these people are, are not going to accept the fact that there is illegal organ harvesting going on in this fucking province. Because it brings in too much money for those criminals within the public union sector people. And their partners within the private sector. Right? So, I'm not going to get into this too much, but I'm going to show you, this I'm going to end this video. Right? Do you see? It's registered. It, I got it in the mail today. Do you see? There's the number. Do you see? There's the number. Now, I'm a little confused, though, because <coughs> I thought maybe maybe I was supposed to send in three of these, right? It's kind of like not having access to that secondary autopsy. They make it where you fail, right? So that that illegal activity can continue on and on and on and on as it gets deeper and deeper and deeper and rooted into society to the point where, you know, we're going to be, like, living in some sci-fi movie that's a combination between The Purge, Hunger Games, and Solvent Green. Well, our politicians will be the upper class that will reap the benefits around our sorrows. Okay, so what they did is they just did the one. They just did the one. They only stamped the one. Right? I don't know why. I don't know why they didn't stamp these ones. Okay? Because I can't I don't think I can photocopy this and then add it to a new, you know, one of these and then um, serve the defendants, right, the government, because it needs an official one of those on there, people. So why they didn't do that here so I could take those and then put them into my own, you know, was it done on purpose? Am I missing something here? And of course, it's not like you can go to the courthouse and ask. How convenient, right? You can't go to their little resource center and ask. Pretty sure that's closed too. With a bunch of fucking sheriffs down in there ready to pull out their guns. Right? You know. Right? If you get too close, that is. Right? And this is supposed to be a healthy fucking transition. Right? In terms of, you know the new and approved society based on some number that nobody can fact check. And if you've been listening to anything that I've been saying all these years, people, and you Google corporate corruption or laundered money, Google laundered money in the province of British Columbia, Canada, and it's going to take you into the billions Eight billion, seven to eight billion, just in the housing market alone in 2018. We don't have 2019 figures yet because we don't tackle the big issues, right? We tackle the little issues and we blow them out of proportion so that we can scare the pants off of everybody and basically bring in martial law. So, as you, as they criminalize us for not having an antibody now, you watch and see. That's what they're trying to do. Right? So, 
I don't know. I'm going to have to phone. <laughs> I'm going to have to phone and find out what happened and where it went wrong. Okay. <coughs> Do I send these back? <coughs> right? Do I send these back with those so that they can stamp them and then send them back to me so that I have the originals to send when I serve the uh, Minister of Attorney General and Ministry of Public Safety and Solicitor General. Is that one that I'm just serving? Or am I serving two different ministries? I don't know. All I know is I don't think I can serve anybody right now because they didn't stamp these ones for me so that I can put them into the notice of claim so that I can officially serve the government as they are uh, blocking my comments even though that's the first comment I've made on any of their videos for a couple of years now. I don't even remember the last time I did a comment on one of their uh, videos. It's been so long. So if they're blocking my comment based on just what I said, that tells you something, people. Okay. So I just want to, oh yeah, say... It's there. There it is. It's on there. So it's in the courthouse, people. And I have been, like, going into the petition. And the last time I, I looked, it was, like, at uh, 1,323 or something like that. So when this went in, it went in at 1,268, right? 67. Right? It went in at 1,267. I know it doesn't seem like much, but now we're at uh, 1,300 and something like 23. So the numbers are still coming in. So this is good. So I figure I'm not going to get all stressed out about it because I'm stressed out, period, right now, people. Like, you don't know how ill I feel with just everything that's been going on in my life with just... You know, they want to go on about 94 deaths and call that a pandemic. But yet we have over 1,500 people every year dying from fentanyl-related deaths as the cops cover up freaking murder, straight-up murder, okay, so that they can continue to harvest organs um, without impunity, without having to be fact-checked, without having to answer to anybody, because they'd rather feed you the lie, oh, it makes you feel good to donate the organs, so if you donate the organs, you know, we can put that out in the public, like, what a good thing that's going on, despite all these deaths, there's your pandemic, they're seriously people... 94 deaths is nothing compared to the thousands and thousands and thousands of people who have died from fentanyl as our local politicians, right, in terms of a province or a state or even federal, they do jack shit about it.